everybody, it's 6.43. Welcome back to Great Day for this Wednesday. And as Jason has been telling you all morning long, it's a great day to grow it. But the big question is, great day to grow it inside or great day to grow it outside? Well, I'll just say that I've been telling you guys for three weeks that slow down because it's way too early and yep. it's going to get it's cold again. It's getting cold and, again. And, it, uh, and, and like I say, we still are quite a ways from our last frost date. So it's a... Uh, Average last uh, frost, southern half of Iowa, last two weeks of April, northern half is the first two weeks of May. Yeah. So north uh, of I-80, there's yep. still chances. And, uh, you know, yeah. Mother's Day is usually just kind of a good time to figure that that's the last, last frost date. So um, we got a little ways to go, but uh, there's still a lot going on. You know, people are planting perennials and stuff, and uh, there's still... Um, just in your yard now, if you have stuff out there now, this is one of the things, this is creeping flock. Um, you know, that's gonna be blooming normally now in your yard. So if you have some of that, you're, you're starting to get some color on that. Okay. Um, that's a nice perennial. This is a bleeding heart. Those are really pretty. Um, and those are starting to bleed. Those are that a perennial also? That is a perennial really? also. Those are starting to come on now. So those are, uh, those are really pretty. Yeah, I had one of those in my yard um, a few years ago and that thing would get three foot tall and that big around it was really? just beautiful awesome. and then we uh, kind of changed the configuration of the deck and had to move it and it never it didn't move very well mm -hmm. so but uh, those things were beautiful um, and, and like I say with perennials they're okay to plant all of our perennials now um, are outside they've been outside for about three weeks so they're hardened off and uh, ready to go and those okay. things can be planted without uh, w without um, worry worry on those um, you know, same with the tulips. The tulips, I come by the dairy this morning, and boy, the tulips over there are, are just in prime condition now. Really? So if you're over on the east side, drive by there and see that, because those are, they're pretty for about a week, but they're just absolutely beautiful right now. So those are things. Strawberries, um, definitely time to plant strawberries. Now, well, there, there are, are any, different it, kinds of these, right? Right, and, and are there any tricks of trying to get strawberries to grow? Is there any certain area you need to plant them in? Because there's some mm. people that have tried for years and just can't get them to get established. Well, again, they're a full sun thing, so that's a, um, you know, that's the main thing, get them out there in the full sun. They pretty much, uh, they like a sandy soil, but they'll pretty much grow anywhere, you know, you have them, but mm -hmm. they like a sandy soil. Um, the, the biggest problem we're going to have now with, and it's kind of, we kind of go through this every year with strawberries, um, your fruit trees, all that stuff, they're starting to bloom now. And that's fine if it don't get cold, but when we, when we have this, these cold mornings and this yeah. frost, and if it kills those blooms, knocks those blooms off, then it's not going to set fruit. So I think we might have a little bit of an issue with that. Right. Um, that's one of the reasons, you know, people, you should cover your strawberries up with straw or something in the fall. But the reason you do that is not so much to protect them from the winter, but you want to leave that straw on them late in the spring so they don't come out too soon. Okay. Because that way, you know, if you don't have straw on them, they're already starting to bloom and it freezes, then you lose your fruit. Right. But if you leave that straw on and make them bloom a little bit later, then you'll have a nice crop. Now, once you've had strawberries in like June, that's it, right? Are there well, ever-bearing the, strawberries? There is ever-bearing. There's, there's uh, literally, I think we probably have about 12 different varieties of strawberries. Ah, okay. But, wow. uh, but yeah, June-bearing and ever-bearing. June-bearing is just one nice big crop um, in June. Normally, that's what you plant if you're going to plant them in the ground. Normally, you would plant um, June-bearing. Okay. Um, ever-bearing, a lot of people will plant them in hanging baskets and stuff so you can have them, you know, oh, on your okay. deck and stuff. And then the, they'll just drape down and you'll get a berry or two now and then. But okay. they don't produce near as good as the uh, June bearing, that's for sure. But there's no real trick to, uh, you know, and, and every place you get strawberries is going to be a little bit different. We have about eight plants in this pot and you'll just, you know, as you plant those, you just kind of will pull them out and they'll pull right apart and then space them out. Okay. And uh, the the main thing and it's hard to do um, you're better off when you plant these to pick all those blooms off don't let them don't let them bear fruit this year and oh so, okay. really yeah that way the rather than that plant sending all its uh, strength to the make a strawberry it, uh, it all that um, energy will go to the plant and making the plant grow and spread so that's what you want to do on those so that's a that's a good thing there. So I, plant the strawberries, then go to the produce section, get some strawberries, get some strawberries. and then in June say, hey, look at my strawberries. There you go. And <laughs> we do that with Molly at the greenhouse and <laughs> sticks them in there because she loves them. And and uh, but that's but yeah. But uh, the next year you'll have a good crop. And I'll tell you, there's nothing better than homegrown strawberries. The, the the strawberries in the store are fine, but 
they don't taste anything like what they you grow taste in your totally backyard. Different. Yeah, yeah, totally different. So, uh, but those are those are some things that you can be doing now. Like I say, definitely time for perennials and stuff. Um, tomatoes um, still need to be on hold with those things. Now, is there anything we can do to get the soil ready for when it does warm up? Do we need to well, again, anything and, uh, into the soil? Yeah, and again, you know, some peat, some nice peat moss, some uh, perlite, vermiculite, stuff like that. You know, you was talking about you're going to get your garden tilled now. Uh, per your and, suggestion, uh, instead of going out and renting a tiller or buying another tiller, he said, just have somebody do it. First of all, they do it. <laughs> Which <laughs> is the big thing, Second yes. of all, it's going to be a lot better than you do because uh -huh. they're experienced at it. So. <laughs> yes. You, you know, I'll never forget in this years ago, but my dad, we had a huge garden when we was kids. And... Um, it, to me, it's just very inexpensive to get that tilled, and I'll never forget this guy coming, um, tilled this giant garden for my dad. And I mean, he was out there two or three hours and tilling it up and stuff. And he come down to the greenhouse, and he says, uh, "My dad says, well, what do I owe you?" And he says, uh, "Oh, he says twenty bucks." Dad says, twenty bucks." And the guy says, "Well, I'd be happy with fifteen. So <laughs> no way. <laughs> but, it's, but, but it's just, yeah. And like I say, you know, you can usually get your garden tilled for what it'll cost you to rent a rotor tiller, and then it beats you to death trying to till it. So yeah, it's um, tough. Yeah, that's always a good thing. Just have that done. Now you, it looks like you brought something in that I might not even be able. Some to unkillables. Kill. And yeah. then. Um, Unkillables. That's a new category <laughs> in the Furnace Greenhouse. Is the, it's the Jackie Unkillables. The Jackie. This is the Unkillables. Well, and these are, these are, uh, we have some succulent gardens out there. Um, I think this is, we have some smaller ones and larger ones. I think this is one of the smaller ones. They're $25. But that is something we, Joyce and I to go out to California, and we first seen these out in California. And everybody's got them out there because they can just leave them outside year round. Mm -hmm. But, um, this is nice, you know, to have on your patio, on your picnic table, what have you. You can bring it in the house in the wintertime. Um, it doesn't grow a lot. It can probably stay in that container for a year, and then you'll have to bump it up a little bit. But um, they're not indestructible, but they're better. Uh, what most people do with these that really does them in is too much water. They, uh, they prefer to be on the dry side. Okay. And uh, even What about in, sun, sun and shade? Um, you know, once they get to this stage, uh, we had one last year in our, um, you know, canopy out on the deck, which is in the shade all the time, and it did just fine. Um, you can have them in the sun, and they do just fine. It's just, uh, they're just a good all-purpose uh, thing that's hard to kill. Yeah. Very nice, and they look good. They look good all year. So, um, but just all the different textures and stuff in those is uh, makes those really nice. You can bring so, them inside in the winter. Uh, you can bring them inside in the winter, and they do fine in the house. Absolutely. Gotcha. Um, you know, out in California, they're just like I say, they're just massive because they grow forever out there, and they're just beautiful out there. And then uh, the other thing I brought was, uh, um, and he was he was asking, uh, cladium or elephant ear. Um, I don't know, this is a type of elephant ear, but uh, we call those caladiums. An elephant ear is more just those big, big, big giant green leaves right, that would be right. considered an elephant ear. Well, these come in different colors. There's probably about, I think I got eight or ten different colors uh, on those, which are, are caladiums. They're excellent for the shade. They give you some nice color in the shade, like a hosta and what have you. Okay. Um, if you had those out now, those would freeze very easily. They don't like the cold whatsoever. But uh, they're, they're not a perennial, but if you take the time to dig the bulb up in the fall, you have uh, you can bring that bulb in and put it back out in the spring and it's ready to go again. You just throw it in a pot over the winter? Uh, just take it out of the dirt, throw it in a paper paper bag, oh, okay. put it throw, in the throw it in the basement, mm -hmm. and away you go. Same with, same with those big elephant ears, you just you know you can just hang on to them. Okay. Well, you you got some elephant and ears. We're going to plant those in May as yeah yeah. yeah you, again. You, again, they they are a warm weather thing and, and yeah the ones they, we got were supposed to be monster elephant ears. So we'll show, yeah, see how those yeah, go. See so how you're going to be come. taking care of them. You're going to be making sure they uh, go the right I'll way. I'll help you with them the best they can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you have a couple locations. I want to let people know about you have yep, your um, main location. Our main location, Joyce and I and uh, Dugan are there, and I'm going to bring Dugan in one of these days Yay. to show you. I, I met Jackie's puppies, and uh, we got a little pup like that, which I never thought I'd have. But, but anyway, Dugan and Joyce and I are out on 70th in Johnston, and uh, Gary and Jackie are taking care of the uh, location down in Boonville, just west of the Waveland Cafe. So come see us. There you go. There you Wonderful. go. Some great, great ideas. Thank you, sir. Thank it you is 